agree? Oh, Do you no, agree that Mohammed is your talking, example uh, for mankind? Just talking. No, what I'm interested in talking about, uh, I would like to talk about God. I would like to talk okay. about Trinity. I would like to talk about Yahweh and the difference between Yahweh and Allah. Uh, this oh, is the oh, subject okay. I would like to talk how about. about. How yeah? about, because, why are you because, afraid of this topic, which is why uh, Muhammad and the, the Ten Commandments? Uh, why the, are you afraid the, of this let topic? Me, let, I'm not afraid. So but, let's debate it. No, no. The thing is that you don't believe in Islam and Muhammad and this stuff. So, so according to that, why should I talk about it as long as you don't believe it and I have to prove it for you? So I would like to, to talk what about your belief and if it's true or, or, or wrong according to the Bible. And this is what I find it interesting. Yeah, but sir, I find it a bit shameful that as a Muslim, you don't want to talk about your prophet, who you think is an example for all mankind. And really, you should be proving to me why I should follow him, why what? I should believe Allah when Allah says he is the example for all mankind. And what all you want to talk about is the Bible. I'm very happy to talk about the Bible. In fact, this debate would contain the Bible because we're talking about Muhammad and the Ten Commandments, which is from the Bible. Should we just do it? Let's just do it. Why not? Let me ask you one thing. Do you, do you believe uh, Muhammad is a prophet? Of course no, not. No, absolutely not. You believe not. Quran? No. Do you believe but in I do, Islam? But do you no. believe here, sir? And you, you're telling me it's shameful for me, it's shameful for me to, to not to talk about it. Why should I prove it for you as long as you don't want to talk about the essence of the belief? Uh, uh, this is, uh, is going to be very hard. Shall we move somewhere else? So if you agree with me, if you want me to talk, let's talk about God, who is God, who is the Yahweh, who is Allah, who is Jesus, according to the Bible, and, uh, and maybe, maybe later on, because why do you need the Bible? Yes. Just, be, just tell me, why do you need the Bible to convince me to be a Muslim? Thank you very much. I am a Muslim who wants to find out the truth. And the truth, I read the Quran, so I know about the Quran. So, so why don't you use the, the Quran Bible, to bring because, me to Islam because, rather than the Bible? the Bible? From the Bible, for the Christian, is the proof for them that Islam is the true according to the teaching of Jesus. Because teaching of Jesus confirm Islam is a true religion. So, I'm saying, I'm saying. so you're saying that wait a minute, you're saying the teaching of Jesus confirms Islam. Yes. That's what you just said. Okay, so I'll list some of the teachings of Jesus and can you tell me how they confirm Islam? Alright? Thank you very okay, much. Okay, let me list them for you. Okay. Jesus teaches okay that he is the son of God. Now, how does that confirm Islam? Jesus teaches very clearly, he says it over and over and over again in the Bible, he is the Son of God, or the Son of Man, which is another way of saying he's the Son of God, he's the Messiah, he is divine. Tell me how that confirms Islam. Okay. Confirm Islam by his teaching, O oh, Israel, the Lord our God is one. As the pro all, all the prophets before him, they teach the same message. Uh, the Lord our God is one God. He never teach Trinity, he never teach Incarnation. And this is why he, you said that he referred to himself as the Son of God. He referred him to himself as the Son of Man. He never referred to himself as the Son of God. And I can give you a proof uh, to prove that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now first of all, first of all, I just want to ask you a question. Let me ask you, you've had your, your habit, okay? Are you denying, are you telling me that Jesus never referred to himself as the Son of God? Are you saying that he never referred to himself as the Son of God? He, he referred to himself as a slave, servant, a student, a son of man, but he never referred to himself as the Son of God. Maybe if it's one you can find because there is too many contradiction and confusion in your, your Bible uh, through the gospel, the four gospels, you might find it, but according to me, 
and I can show you where about and you can find it on the spot. Okay. Here we go. Okay, sorry, let, let me read this, let me read this to okay. you. Okay, you've given me a challenge, one second, you've given me a challenge to find from the Bible okay. where Jesus refers to himself as God's son, okay? He says this, okay. Why then do you accuse me of blasphemy because I said I am God's son? Why then, he's asking the Pharisees, do you accuse me of blasphemy because I said, I am God's son. There is Jesus referring to himself as God's son. But let me go back to my original question. Why, in order to make me a Muslim, do you have to go to the Bible? Why can you not just convince me from the Quran and from the life of Muhammad? Does this show you, does this show me that actually Islam is already fundamentally inadequate because it cannot just simply appeal to its own scriptures and to its own prophet in order to prove itself? Okay. First. And actually what you've done, okay, what you've done is, I'm so glad that you brought me to this scripture to say that Jesus is God's son, because actually that shows to me already that the Quran is a false book, Islam is a false religion, and Muhammad is a false prophet, okay, who claimed, because in the Quran it's claimed that Jesus said, he apparently claimed never to be God's son, and here we have it in black and white, that he actually did claim to be God's son. So what I suggest is that you leave Islam, because obviously it's it's completely inconsistent with the scriptures that came before it. Okay, let's uh, agree about something. When I want to talk, you listen to me, and when you talk, yes. I listen to you. Fine. Uh, I don't like I to interrupt you. I don't like you to interrupt me. And I don't like you to give me multiple uh, questions during our conversation. Uh, let's talk about Son of God. Son of God. One minute, one minute, sorry. No, no, no. I, it's not about time. Okay. It's not about time. Forget about time. Okay. Uh, when, when, when I finish, you can talk. When you ask, I can answer. With, within reason, okay. Within reason, reason, of course. I'm not going to talk for uh, 10 minutes. Uh, Son of God, it means. Anyone, anyone who applied the law of God on his life, live by it, and serve, obey, submit to the will of God, he's gonna be called Son of God. Because God, he never begat, he never begotten. Because God is everlasting, ever living. God, he's a creator. And he didn't have any son, because if he create a son, People would believe in the Son and worship the Son and forget uh, the Father. And this will create confusion. That's why when Jesus teaching, he teach my, my Father and your Father, my God and your God. The Lord, our God, is one. Our, that is including Jesus. Up to you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So My name is Sayyid. Sayyid Yahya, okay. and uh, I comment okay. under uh, the name Sayyid F11 as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we're just going to talk about this whole situation about Jesus being the Son of God. You actually came to me at the beginning of this, of this discussion, and you said, actually, it's nowhere in the Bible that Jesus says that he is God's Son, and I've given you clear proof from here, from the Bible. This is John chapter 10, okay, it's John chapter 10, 36, and he's saying, uh, to the Pharisee, he says, why then do you accuse me of blasphemy because I said I am God's son? Now, you seem to, you, you, you uh, seem to imply that actually anybody can call themselves the son of God, like we're all kind of creatures of God, you know, we're all kind of in that sense. But actually, if you look at the scripture here, what it says is the Jews uh, actually thought Jesus was blaspheming, okay, when he said, I am God's son because according to Jews that is to call yourself God's son is to say that you have the same essence as God himself it was a blas blasphemous thing to do to say that you are God's son okay so um, actually the, the scripture says that no that's not the sense in which uh, Jesus was saying he was saying very much as a claim to divinity now here's my issue you were saying that actually uh, you know Jesus came just to just to uh, say that he wasn't the son 
son of God. But actually, in doing so, you're again proving to me that Islam is a false religion, that the Quran is a false book, and that Muhammad is a false prophet. Why? Because according to your own book, okay, this is Surah 5, 48, it says here, we have sent down to you, O Muhammad, the book, the Quran, in truth, confirming the scripture that came before it. Okay? And it also tells us in the Quran, it says, Christians, you are to judge by what has been revealed to you. Okay? So from that point of view, this is my scripture. This is my scripture. And it says absolutely clearly that Jesus is the unique son of God. That was the claim that he always made. And why did they even put him to death? They put him to death for blasphemy because he claimed to be God's one and only son, except it wasn't blasphemy because Jesus, that's who he actually was. Okay. So now my question to you is, why are you following this book that is teaching you lies about Jesus, that is contradicting and contradicting itself about the scripture? Can you, can you, can you repeat, can you repeat what I said about the son? What does that mean, the son of God according to the Bible? Can, can you repeat what I have said and t told you? Can you repeat it to me? Can you repeat? Because so tell when, me again. When, I'm sorry. When, maybe I misunderstood when, you. Tell when, me again. When I answered your question, so it seems that you wasn't there, concentrating on listening to me, but you was concentrating how to find a possible way that you go and I'm accuse me so of, about said, following Quran and Before Islam you, or you something, and you you. You, you want to advise me, why are you staying Muslim? Why don't you come and join us? Uh, thank you for the advice. Please tell me what you're going to uh, say. This is, this is, I, I follow what I find true. And now, let, let me... Sorry, sorry, would you repeat to me what I didn't address? I'm sorry if I misrepresented you, if I didn't hear your question. Maybe say Any, it again. Anyone who lives by the commandment and by the will of God, he's going to be called the Son of God. And the Jew, they refuse Jesus because he come as a messiah for them and he perform wonders and miracles and they are still in the end denying him and they try, they try to kill him many many times and that's why he at the end he told them and he warns them that the kingdom of god will be taken away from you because you call yourself the son of Abraham, but you are the son of Shaitan, because if you are the son of Abraham, you would have believed what I come with. That's why they deny him, and he performed miracle after miracle after miracle, and they still are trying to find a way to stone him. Hmm. So why don't you believe in Jesus after I he did miracle after miracle after miracle? Thank you very and much. He said if, and, and I'm thank I, you for I quoting like the it. scripture, because why, from but, that token, do you not believe Thank Jesus? you very much. I believe, listen to me, I believe in Jesus the way God wants me to believe in Jesus and the, the way Jesus teach me how to I'm believe in him. Mm -hmm. Jesus is a, a spirit of God and a word of God. The word of God is be Jesus and he was created by the will of God and there was no is the only person, Jesus, who was created without a father, miraculous, as Adam was created without a father, without a mother. But Jesus was created by the will of God, by the saying, be, and he come to be. And now I would like to refer, Jesus referred to himself as the son of, of man. Matthew, you read 5, verse number 9. 17 verse number 22 8 verse 20 18 verse number 11 26 verse number 2 as and Luke referred to himself as the son of man uh, Luke number 9 verse number 22 and John number 5 mm -hmm. verse number 27 Okay. Thank you, sir. Can I have, can I do no, 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 it now? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. No, 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 so, no, 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 here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Don't run away. Uh, what do you think the Jews then, understood by, hold on, hold on, hold on. by it when oh, Jesus talked about the no, Son of Man? Because I admit, it's a... It's a Bro, the guy said... Ask them to walk a little bit away. Ask them to move away. Um, Just give us a space, please. Okay. What do you think... Why do you think Jesus used that expression, the Son of Man? Do you think he was just using it to refer to himself as a human being? 
because do you that, think that's what he was doing that's what he teach because he teach the lord our god is one and when he he talked to maria magdalena he told her after the resurrection he told her don't touch me i didn't do, i didn't ascend to my god and your god okay. my father and your father that mean anyone who obey the his teaching and believe in the oneness of god is a, a submitter to God, which is Muslim. Okay. And this is what, what it is about. Can I respond? Yeah, okay. of course. Let's just stick with that title, the Son of Man, okay? okay. Because actually, Jesus, when he uses that title, yeah. he's referring back to the Old Testament. He's yeah. not saying Son of Man as in I'm just the son of a human being, okay? And it's a very understandable mis mistake to make, reading that with our 21st century eyes, think, okay, that's a bit of an odd thing to say. Uh, when Christians claim he's the son of God. But actually, what he's doing is he's saying that he is referring to the Messiah that was prophesied about in the Old Testament, the, one of the titles of which was the son of man. And here's where it comes from, okay? This is from the prophet Daniel. This is the, from the prophet Daniel, okay? And this is chapter 7, verse 13. Now, let's think about the attributes of this, this person in this passage called the son of man. In my vision at night, I looked, and there before me, this is having like a heavenly vision, was one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven approached and he approached the ancient of days that's another name for god and was led into his presence he this son of man was given authority glory and sovereign power all peoples nations and men of every language worshipped him his dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed and let's think about this the attributes of this son of man person he comes on the clouds of heaven in, in the quran who comes on the clouds of heaven carry on who, who comes C on the clouds on. of heaven carry on carry on do you know the answer carry to that on. question T today today who comes on the clouds of heaven even in islam i didn't uh, see him uh, come in as a no, on who the comes on the clouds of heaven but Allah. Allah, thank God. you. Okay. And this is the Son of Man okay. who comes with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancients of days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. To whom does sovereign power belong in the universe? Who does that belong to? To God. Thank you. So the Son of Man, okay, has sovereign power and he comes on the clouds of heaven. Okay, all peoples, nations, and men of every language worshipped him. Who alone in the whole universe gets worship? Allah. Thank you. So, God alone has worship, God alone has sovereign power, God alone comes on the clouds of heaven. So, this means that this Son of Man person is not just a creature, they must be divine. They have sovereign power, they come on the clouds of heaven, and um, they are worshipped. So when Jesus is saying he is the son of man, what is he saying? Help me. Uh, uh, today, by the way, I, I read that uh, the authority you're talking about, does Jesus have authority? Does Jesus have dominion power? Does Jesus yes. have, uh, 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 what's the, uh, the last uh, the last word? Because Comes I, on the clouds I, of heaven? Uh, uh, Let's look at this. Did, Can I give did, you another scripture? Did he, did he come? Him, sir, Saeed. Did, did, he, did he come yet on the cloud of heaven? Not yet, because we Not believe yet. in the second coming. Wait, sir, wait, sir. The, the, we, the, we are talking about his first coming. Mm -hmm. he, he didn't come with the glory. He was humiliated, according to you. Yeah. Uh, he, nobody, uh, even the people who come to him, they tried to kill him. Mm -hmm. He didn't have any dom domination. They didn't worship him. Yeah, and I worship, agree. I agree. Uh, worship him here is not worship him by worshiping, it's by obeying him. Did they obey him? These people who Jesus said, I've been sent to the last sheep of Israel only. Did they obey him? Okay. They reject him. Sir, sir. They try to kill him. And what did he teach? I've been I've been sent only to the last sheep of Israel. So, sir, so he, can I just finish this part? Okay, okay, because, because, all right? Okay, uh, because in you know, case... it's including, uh, uh, I'm not talking about something else. Okay. Uh, you did it, let me finish, because I'm gonna finish soon. Okay, uh, go for it. Uh, you know, he commend, he commend his apostle, do not go among the Gentiles, or do not go That's among the Samaritan, rather go to the, uh, the Lordship of Israel only. Uh, but uh, they, uh, they never listen to him, they never obey him, they reject him, they try to kill him, and till they crucify him, according to you, he was resurrected. 
Okay. Can, can I risk a response? Please. Okay. Now, um, I noticed, sir, but Said, by the end, there was a little jumping from topic to topic. So we kind of went away from the Son of Man and we went on to Jesus only came for the lost sheep of Israel. Okay? Fair enough. But I would like you to stay okay. with me, if you okay. don't mind, for a little no bit. Problem. Because I'm glad that you agreed. I'm very glad that you agreed that this Son of Man person must be divine. Now, this is, let's, now just to confirm, just in case maybe we're, this is ambiguous, maybe uh, Jesus didn't make this absolutely clear, but we read the scripture that actually he does. And this is in when he's put to trial, right? This is what he says, okay? The high priest wants, you know, because there's all this confusion going about what is Jesus' actual identity. Identity. And the high priest asked him, are you the Christ, the son of the blessed one? They want to know. They're saying, look, Jesus, if you are the Christ, the Christ is a divine title. I am, says Jesus. And you will see, he quotes basically from Daniel 7. He says, and you will see the son of man sitting at the right hand of the mighty one and coming on the clouds of heaven. Fantastic. That is what he says now. So who is Jesus? Fantastic. claiming to be Fantastic. just answer my question who is jesus claiming to be and look at the reaction wait in case it's not clear the high uh, priest it, wait, 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 again, so the high priest okay. i am said jesus and I, I, you will see the son of man sitting at the right hand of the mighty one and coming on the clouds of heaven wait a minute let me just finish this part the high priest tore his clothes why do we need any more witnesses he asked you have heard the blasphemy what do you think they condemned him as worthy of death because they realized when jesus said that that you will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven on the right hand of the mighty one they're realizing what jesus is doing he's claiming to be god that's why they were accusing him of blasphemy now can you please tell me why you still think that Jesus was saying, don't worship me, you need to worship basically the God of Islam. What you have done, I'm, I'm grateful to you. You prove two things. You prove that the Jesus confirmed his, he is the Messiah, he is the Christ. I am a Christ Messiah, mm -hmm. but I am not God. And by the second verse you said, he will be seated on the right hand side from the mighty one. Again, you, 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 uh, you uh, confirm that he is not the mighty God because Jesus teach our God is one God. The mighty one is the true God and he is he's one who are uh, uh, want to glorify him by allowing him and uh, uh, giving him a state to be sitting next to him but not as a God because the Bible teach there's only one in Isaiah there's only one God and there's no other God beside me or before me. So when he sit on the right hand side, so we have the true God and the main Jesus Christ, whom God sent to be seated along with God. And who is on the left hand side? Maybe another prophet, another messenger, because God will raise their status because they serve him, obey him, submit to him, and they done everything. And Jesus teach, I can do nothing of myself, all my teaching, all the world, it belongs to him. So he never teach that he is a mighty God or he is a mighty one who can do anything, but he has the authority given and permission by the Father to do as a sign to the Jew. Up to you. Okay. So, uh, do I need to remind you about the attributes of the Son of Man of Daniel 7? Should we remind you of those attributes? The Son of Man in Daniel 7 comes on the clouds of heaven. Who does that? Who does that? He didn't come. Who does that? He didn't come. Who does that? Who comes on the Jesus says he will see the Son of Man referring to himself coming on the clouds of heaven. Who does that? Okay. Who does that? We believe. We Please believe. answer the question again. No. Who does that? Can, can I Who answer? Does that? Who can comes I from answer? the clouds of heaven? Can I answer my way? No, I want you to answer my no, no, way. You cannot put the word in my mouth. You the already you put them in your own mouth. You already said it's Allah. Let look, me answer look, for look. you what you said already. It's Allah look, with, who comes from the clouds of heaven. Right? With due respect, I don't like to be abused and to how to answer Hello. the question because I would answer the question the way I like and you can ask the way you like. What do you think? So I'm just asking you to repeat what you said earlier. And what you said earlier is the one who comes in the clouds of heaven is Allah. 
okay? The one who is worthy of worship is Allah. This is okay? true. Very the true. one who is worthy, okay, of sovereignty is Allah. Now, the Son of Man in Daniel 7, the Son of Man Jesus claims to be, the Son of Man that Jesus identifies as being himself in Mark 14, does all of these things. That means Jesus is God, okay? And when you're telling me that Jesus came only to preach the God of Islam, again, you provided me no evidence of anything. All of the evidence from the scriptures points to Jesus being God, and in which case you need to throw out the Quran, you need to throw out Muhammad, you need to throw out Islam as being a completely false book. You finished? Yes. Let me remind oh, you. Oh, no, not quite. Sorry, just one more thing. Because then you said, you can, you then you ask. talked about the right hand. You said, ah, the right hand, that's, this must mean somehow that Jesus is not divine. Well, actually, that's not true because we know that the Old Testament to be at the right hand of God was to be God himself. Let's look at how we can look at this as Psalm 98. Let's look at this. Wait, sir, wait, sir. I'm not going to be too much longer. I'm not going to be too much longer. And then after this, sir, please can we talk about Muhammad and the Ten Commandments? You said you'd do that. Go on. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. Sing to the Lord, Yahweh, he's done marvellous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. God and his right arm have worked salvation for him. His right arm is part of himself, part of the divinity, part of the divine essence. And there is Jesus. Again, this is not helping your case at all. If anything, it's undermining your case. Because when Jesus said that you will see the Son of Man coming at the right hand of God on the clouds of heaven, Jesus is making yet another claim to be divine. Now let's count. In fact, let's go back to Mark 14 and let's actually count in one verse how many times, how many divine claims Jesus is actually making. Son of man, that's one. Sitting at the right hand of God, that's another one. Coming on the clouds of heaven, that is another one. There's three all in one verse. So please, if you're telling me that I've got this wrong, that the scripture's got this wrong, that actually what my scripture is telling me is that Jesus is not God, that we have to worship the God of the Quran, please tell me. But also, I want to come back to my original point. My original point is Saeed, my friend here, wants me, obviously he's part of the Dawah team, he wants me to become a Muslim. And in order to become a Muslim, where does he go? Why does he not prove to me that Muhammad is so amazing? Why does he not pick up the Quran and go, look at this, there's a brilliant book, you've got to believe in it. Instead, he has to go to the Bible to prove his case for Islam. That to me shows me that Islam is a completely redundant religion because it cannot even stand up for itself. It's not really doesn't really exist on its own terms apart from as a polemic in Christ, as, against Christianity, all of which we have refuted. Yeah. Uh, have, do you want to have your closing statement? No, yeah, let's I, close it up. No. Let's close it up. And then we'll talk yeah, about yeah, Muhammad and the Ten yeah, Commandments. Yeah. She wants to close up after she gave a lecture about uh, that Muslim, he cannot understand what the Christianity is. First, Malachi 3, 6, God doesn't change his nature. Hebrew 1, 12, the God remains the same in nature. God is the living and everlasting. Haba, Kuku 1, 12, Isaiah, Isaiah 40, 28, God, Lord, is everlasting God, the creator. He will not grow tired or weary. Jesus, did he grow or he was still a baby and he never grow up? He didn't get tired or not? Isaiah, Isaiah 44, verse number six. Lord Almighty is the first and the last. Apart from me, there is there's no God. Isaiah 45, number five. I am the Lord and there's no other. Apart from me, there's no other God, none beside me, none, none beside me. That means the mighty one, you, we, when we talk, he's sitting on the right hand side of God. That means he's not God, he's a human, and God is a spirit, according to John. God has no form, God is everlasting, ever living. Jesus, he was uh, brought to life when he was born out of Mary, a man. And God is not a man. God is not a man, nor son of man. God is living in approachable light, invisible, eternal, and immortal. And no one is like God because God, the creator, none of his creation, including Jesus, Jesus whom serve, obey, submit, praise, glorify, fell on his face to worship. Who 
who Jesus failed to worship himself or who sent him to the people of Israel? Just answer that. Was that your closing statement? It's not a closing statement. I, I ask you a question. Okay. He was worshipping himself when he fell on his face or worshipping the Father who gave him the authority and the permission to do all what he has done to prove for the Jews that he is their Messiah. Please, just very clear. And John number one, 420, no one can see God. Did people see Jesus or not? Okay. So you've basically got, can I answer now? Because you've no, talked a long no, time. No, long now, time. You know, now I'm going to ask, ask you, when Jesus teach, I am and the Father and the Father is in me. How do you explain that? Um, okay, you've jumped all over the place. Okay, I think you're slightly panicking because you can't no, 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 repeat no, the fact panicking. that I've shown you very clearly from the scriptures reference okay, after that, reference. Jesus, that Jesus, when he says Son of Man, right, it's a divine title. I've shown you that repeatedly. This would be the third time from Daniel 7 and from Mark 14. Okay, and your response to that is not to tell me, oh, actually, Lizzie, this is how that scripture is wrong. Here's how I can prove to you that that scripture is wrong. Instead, slightly panicky, you just get out your folder and just read a list of completely random verses, okay, as if to kind of undo that case. What you're doing is doing absolutely nothing to undo my case. So I'm just going to make that case again, because anybody can pick up any book and just read a whole random verses without any kind of context, without any explanation and go, ha, this somehow explains my case. But let's do this again. Let's do this again. Okay? Do you, do you, because you originally came to this debate. Wait a minute. You, you talked a long time now. Let me have my turn. You came to this debate. You came to this debate. Wait a minute. And your original, and I want, now interestingly, yes, sir, what, what was the original topic that I wanted to debate? I wanted to talk to you about Muhammad and why Muhammad broke all 10 of the 10 commandments. And you say, no, no, no. I don't want to talk about that, which again is so interesting. As a Muslim, he wants to call me to Islam. He's got this amazing prophet. According to the Quran, yeah, according to the Quran, is, is the perfect example to mankind. And this is your opportunity to really sell him to me, to sell him to the world. Okay, but you can't do that. Instead, what you want to do is basically just come and attack the Bible. So, and uh, fine, I agree to that. And then what you, you talked wait, wait a minute, what you talked about then, sir, was you said, you said, ah, uh, you started off this whole debate with saying, well, aha, do you know that Jesus refers to himself as the Son of Man. Exactly. Now, here's the thing. I have proven to you from the scriptures, you've even agreed with me that the Son of Man, according to Daniel 7, is someone who is to be worshipped, someone who has sovereign power, someone who comes in the clouds of heaven, and you agreed, it's on camera, you agreed that all of those attributes, sovereignty, someone who comes in the clouds of heaven, someone who has sovereign power, is divine, is God themselves, right? That's exactly what you said. You can deny it now, but if you go back on the tape, you'll find that this is exactly what you said. And then I went to Mark 14, where I showed you that Jesus self-identifies as that person. He says, I am. He's asked, are you the son of the blessed one? Are you the Christ, the son of the blessed one? And he says, I am. And you will see the son of man coming at the right hand of God, right hand of the mighty one, riding on the clouds of heaven. That means Jesus is identifying very specifically with the son of man in Daniel 7. And as you yourself admitted, that person in Daniel 7 must be divine. So I'm just going to leave it there. You've not brought anything to the table that has told me why I should interpret those scriptures another way. All you've done is completely cherry pick, got your file out and read out every single verse you can think of to try and which undermine those about, verses which you, which you haven't done. Bible. So I'm not going to continue this anymore because I'm not because going to go down a hundred rabbit holes of defending different verses that have not been brought into this debate. We'd be here all night. I but guess, if you are willing, so let me just finish. I, I if you are willing, I would love to talk to you about Muhammad and the Ten Commandments and why he broke every single one. Let me just put that to you, okay? Because why, if before, Muhammad is a man of God... On, let me respond to you. Can... You've been talking for the last ten minutes. And please have, have some... I give you the opportunity. I told you, we end up with two gods. The mighty, we one, we, the mighty one and Jesus, the man who sitting on the right hand side, who teach our Lord, there's only one God, my God and your God. And I give you the opportunity, when Jesus fell on his face to worship the Father, is he worshiping himself 
or he's worshiping somebody else, you didn't respond to that. Something else, I told you, I give you good opportunity to get away with everything. I told you, Jesus teach, I am as the Father, and the Father and me. And you didn't reply about that. Now I reply, when he teach, I am as the Father, and the Father and me. And when he pray to the believer to be one with Jesus and the Father, he's teaching the believer wouldn't become God with him, but they become unity and the oneness of God. They believe, the believer and Jesus, they believe in the oneness of the mighty one we talk about. And it's Allah, which Jesus fell on his face to worship. He didn't fall on his face because I don't fall on my face to worship myself. I would be stupid. And Jesus is not stupid. He's teaching us, he's just teaching a Christian to submit, obey, serve the mighty one who sent him as a sign to the Jew, are you with me or are you listening? No, all what you're interested in is, is even denying your Bible, your Bible verses just want me to, to debate about Islam and Muslim. Forget about Islam and Muslim. Oh, let's talk about From a Muslim. Let's talk, Interesting. Forget about Jesus, it. forget about Islam. Why are you here? Why are you here? I, I am here. Honestly, why I are you here? here? If we should forget about Islam. Thank you. I am My here. goodness, I'm so shocked. I am Maybe, here. I mean, I agree. We should forget about Islam. Okay. I am here to invite you to submission to the will of God Go according to Jesus. No, according to Islam. Let's do this. Come on. You know, enough. Enough Muslims. Enough. I've been talking to you for long enough. Give, yeah. me, give, yeah. me, the, give me the credit that for at least half an hour, everybody who's been standing here, at least half an hour, I've been standing here defending the Bible. I have done my bit to make it better. I have done my bit defending the Bible, defending the divinity of Christ. Now, sir, because this, we want to be fair, be, let's Hear it for Islam. Let's hear it for the Quran. Tell me from the Quran why I should be a Muslim. First, first, please, just answer this. When Jesus fell to his face, on his face, he did he worship himself? He wants us to forget or he about worship Islam. the mighty one who's gonna be seated, uh, uh, seated uh, 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 on his right hand side of. Please, answer it. You, can you answer? Sir, I've answered your question about Christianity. I've shown you very clearly from the Bible okay, okay, that Jesus now you is want God. To talk about this stuff. Tell, yeah, and I want to talk about Islam. Okay. Now I want you to tell me, go on, do your best. You're here as a Dawa team, right? Do your best to tell me from Islam. Let's see how well Islam can stand up on its own two feet. Okay. Tell me from Islam why I should be a Muslim. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to talk about Islam. I believe that all the prophets before Jesus included Jesus. All of them who fell on their faces to worship the Lord our God, who is one, Allah, who obey, serve, obey, uh, praise, and submit to His will, to the God will, are Muslim. And they were, they, and the Old Testament, they call them the Son of God because they apply the commandment of God that they don't do whatever God forbids them to do, and they obey whatever God wants them to do. So, not gonna obedient the servants, no, all not, the obedient the servants of God, they are called the Son of God. Son of God, that means servant obedient of God, that they submit to the will of God. And Islam means submission to the will of God. If you don't want to, to call Islam just because your hatred for the word Islam, you are wrong, because Islam means submission to the will of God. And now I'm going to teach you Islam according to your Bible. <laughs> again, again, isn't this hilarious? That my friend has to go to the Bible to teach me about Islam. Why does he not go to the final oh, very, revelation? Why does he not funny. go to the Quran? It's Why does he funny. not go to Muhammad itself? Because it's, they are indefensible. They are indefensible. Okay? Yeah, but actually, because I'm feeling I, generous. Because I'm feeling. No, you I'm going to ask you a question about Gethsemane, about okay. Jesus falling on his face. Yeah? You want me to answer that question at last? Right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Maybe I shouldn't have diverted that one. But actually, let me please. do that. Let's see. Okay, and again, I've I'm so I glad you've chosen. No, I believe you. I'm so Please. glad that you've chosen this passage because okay. again it shows to me, it proves to me by you going to this passage, it proves to me that Islam is a false book, Islam is a false religion, Muhammad is a false prophet, and the Quran is a false book. Let's yeah, read it, heart. okay? Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. 
And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. Okay, yeah. you, you've maintained all this time that Jesus teaches about the oneness of God. We're only meant to, that, that we're only meant to serve the one true God. All right. Yeah. Okay. He took Peter and two of the sons of Zebedee along with him and he began to be sorrowful, sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. This is Jesus who would die on a cross for you to save you, by the way. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, my father, listen to that part, my father, but if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. What does Jesus call God? What does Jesus call God? Wait, no, please answer my question. What does Jesus call God? What is the title? Of Jesus? Thank you. And does it not say, sir, in the Quran that Allah is a father to no one? Okay, so you've just shown me very clearly that Allah is a false God. Allah is a false God because Jesus is praying to a completely different God than Allah because he calls him father. And yet the Quran says it comes to confirm the previous scripture. So thank you that going to this passage, you've shown me that Islam is a false religion, the Quran is a false book, and Muhammad is a false prophet. Now, can you please leave the Bible out of it? It will help you. It will help you to leave the Bible okay, out of it. Okay. And you tell me why, from the Quran only, please, sir, that okay. I should become a Muslim. Let's go back there. We, human, our spirit is from God. We are the son of God by spirit, but not by physical, because when God created Adam, he blew from his spirit and Adam so became alive. And this life belongs to God, that we belong to God. So the God, Allah, is our Father and Spirit, because this Spirit belongs to Him. When we die, the Spirit went go back to Him. Second, when Jesus teach, knock, and it will be open. Seek, and you will find. So seek Ask, Him. Sat, seek Him. I, can, can, I didn't interrupt. Ask, and you will be given. So Jesus went and he went to ask God take away this cup of death away from me did guy did God respond no he didn't according to her but according to to her she tried to ignore that God respond to Jesus and according to Luke uh, uh, number 19 he sent him he sent him a, an angel to strengthen him and assure him, assure him of safety. And, and uh, Jesus, he didn't die for anybody because if Jesus died for somebody, that means God is broken. His own teaching and Ezekiel because and Ezekiel it teach each the wicked soul only will taste death, but if the wicked soul repent and turn and do the degree of God, all has her brief, previous deed will be forgotten. That means will be forgiven. And there's no need to, for sacrifice. And Jesus, peace upon him, teach God want, uh, want uh, mercy, not sacrifice. And Jesus, God, if he accepts the blood of Jesus for the sinner, that means God is broken. Uh, the teaching and Ezekiel as well that the father they don't bear the guilt of the son and the son they don't bear, they bear the guilt of the father so you the father you're making God the criminal sending his son to die for somebody else why is our sin bigger than his mercy when we repent he doesn't forgive us okay is, is is our sin bigger than God's mercy okay, so that he won a price for his forgiveness? I'm going to say, this is going to be the last thing I'm going to say on this topic. Okay, okay it's going to be the last thing Fair I'm going enough. to say on this topic, yeah. all right? Because actually, what has the topic become? Repeatedly, I've asked Saeed, repeatedly, I've asked Saeed, look, you're here as a Muslim, you're here doing dawah. Surely the point of Muslims doing dawah is they want to bring people to Islam. They want to convince people of how amazing Islam is. Has he even done that? Has he even opened the Quran? Has he even read from the Quran? Said, listen, listen to this amazing convincing theology here. Has he even talked about Muhammad? Anything to do with Muhammad? How, how is he amazing is to, to make my mind tick over and think, actually, maybe I won't follow Jesus why you, why anymore. You I'll so follow Muhammad. With Muhammad. He has done nothing to do I, I that. Don't want All to... he has done is butchered the Bible. He's butchered I, the Bible and no. cherry picked the Bible 
according to his own Islamic theology. Yeah, okay? Every the time, I said, every God time. More and here's the thing: when I you know, don't it. tell me off for interrupting, then interrupt me. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Right? Thank I you. apologize. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. He's a nice guy. I like this guy. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, the thing is, right, is that actually he's come here with argument and argument and argument against the Bible. But what he's actually doing, what he's actually doing, is he's arguing against his own Quran, which says repeatedly, it says repeatedly that the Quran is sent down to confirm the previous scriptures that Muhammad, when he was with the Jews. They had the, the scriptures brought to him. He put his hand on them and said, I, what you believe, I believe in this book. Okay, so whenever he wants to take it apart and chop it up, he's actually going beyond what is written. Okay, so, and if anything, he's just exposing the problem that, you know, if he has a problem with the Bible, then he has to apostatize and stop being a Muslim because the, the Quran doesn't have a problem with the Bible. Okay, so I'm really sorry that this time you've been totally, you've totally failed to convince me from Islam at all, the Quran at all, from Muhammad at all, why I should be a Muslim. You've just tried repeatedly and failed uh, to show me that somehow the Bible is faulty and that it doesn't teach the divinity of Christ. What I've shown to you very specifically from the scriptures that it does. Maybe we'll meet again and have a, a different conversation. Okay. All right. God bless you, sir. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Ten commandments. And yes, I did come here asking you, saying, please, Quran, can we have a debate about Quran, Muhammad and the Ten no, Commandments? No, I'm going to talk about Quran. Quran, if you open chapter number two, number three, is talking about with the Christian directly and correct them directly. And if you open chapter number two and the Quran, uh, from verse number 39 to verse number 112, God talking directly to the Jew and remind them and telling them stop saying about God what God he didn't say about himself and tell them not to exceed exceed uh, and worshiping his messenger instead of God. Second, when I said God is all loving, all merciful, all forgiven, you are degrading God by saying that God sent his own son to die for, for the sinner. And I ask you, is God, is this loving, merciful, or forgiven? Uh, why you make him, you making God unforgiven, and loving, and merciful, and, and just, and he is a criminal by sending an innocent person to die for, for somebody. And this is not fair. And this is why I have a problem with the Bible, because I talk with, from the Bible, I agree with some verses and I disagree with some verses because of the contradiction in the Bible. And Quran actually corrects the Bible and asks the Christian and the Jew to come back to see the oneness of God, which I mentioned previously in Isaiah, that the Lord our God is one, there is none like Him, none beside Him, and uh, that the Creator is not not, not like any of his creation. The creator is above all his creation. Jesus teach the father is greater than the son, greater than all. Okay. And you can agree I, with me. Can I, can I talk now? No, please. Okay. Right. Can I ask you a question? Ask me. Are you Allah? No, I'm not. Right. So why have you come to correct the Quran? Okay, because, no, you have. You're saying, actually, the Quran has come. What you're telling me is you're saying the Quran came to correct the Bible. Yes. That's not what Allah says, yes. sir. That's not what Allah says. So unless you're Allah and you're bigger than the Allah's eternal word, you shouldn't say stuff like that because this is what it actually says. Okay, it says, we have sent down to you, O Muhammad, the book in truth, confirming the scripture. It does not say correcting the scripture. It says confirming the scripture. Now, what does that scripture say? That scripture says very clearly that Jesus is God in the flesh. No. Jesus is God in the flesh. Jesus came to earth. Why did he do no. that? Because we are cut off from him. And what does Jesus do? He lays down his life for sinners, people who are far away from God. And we're all far away from God without Jesus. Jesus comes and he says, the reason the Father loves me is not because it's because I lay down my life. Nobody takes it from me, but I lay it down willingly. Jesus goes to the cross. He's not forced. He's not an innocent third human creature that somehow it's unfair. He does it because he is God in the flesh. He is the sinless one. He's the only one who is qualified to die on the cross. Why? To bear the sins of mankind. And every single one of us has sin. And every single one of us needs to put, come to Jesus and have our sins taken by him on the cross. 
And one day, if we do not do that, we will be separated from God eternally in heaven. And one day, Jesus says in the Bible, that every knee will bow to him, willingly or unwillingly. And you have quoted to me, I love, sir, that you love the scriptures enough. You actually quite love the biblical scriptures enough to quote it to me again and again. You talk about Jesus in signs and wonders. You need to bow the knee to Jesus and repent, okay, if you want to have a relationship with God and if you want to have eternal life, all right? Let me you. God bless you. No, because I'm off Let now. Because unless you, you want to talk about Moses, unless you want to talk about Muhammad and the Ten Commandments, I'm not you, sticking no, you around. Don't want to listen. I'm not sticking no, around. I, no, because, you're, you're, you, because that was I, I the deal. I guess you're scared that now. That was the deal. No, scared, I'm away. not scared. Because I'm Jesus teach this shaitan, you bow down only for the Creator, for your God. And you don't test your God. Besides uh, Jesus, why then, if he wi die willingly, why he was complaining and said in the last word, "My God, my God, why you forsaken me? Why you abandoned me? Why you let me down? Why you betrayed me? Why you deceived me? Why you let me down?" So it's not a word of submitter who accept that he's gonna die for somebody else because he's telling God why you forsaken me he's complaining and he's denying God the father that he's dying humiliated like this and this you don't want to admit it because you are scared of the truth and the truth is that God saved Jesus and somebody else died on the cross somebody wicked who tried to set up Jesus Let's save the crucifixion for another yeah. time because have, that's a whole a different day. topic. Have a lovely day. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you very much. So ten commandments. You want to talk Muhammad about the ten commandments? Ten commandments. Yeah. Yes. Five commandments. Uh, hold on, but let, let, let's. Uh, Who wants any break. Muslim? Want to